We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kola Wale, a legal practitioner, joins us this morning on Off the Press. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, uh, Tunde, we'd, we'd like to start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. Post election threat will be Dati Rick's treason charges. Federal government wants. Obidati rigs treason charges, federal government wants, and the uh, Labour Party presidential candidate deputy calling for insurrection is treasonable. That's according to the minister, Lai Mohammed. Then you have Obi should face the law, says APC. Federal government alleges recklessness or reckless, I, I take that again, federal government alleges allegation reckless, says Obi and uh, the PDP. Reps condemns call for interim government, asks DSS to arrest enemies of democracy. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's quite dramatic here, the headlines. Foreign investor Sean Kanu, Rivers Ogun, 24 state. Foreign investor Sean Kanu, Rivers Ogun, and 24 states. I mean, you ask yourself, so if you say 24 plus Rivers and Kanu and Ogun, how many does that leave you with? So we're looking at 27 out of... <laughs> that is six states of the Federation. That's not good for us. Uh, then you find a narrow crisis, cash circulation low. NLC tells the Central Bank of Nigeria. I mean, for once, you would go out. If, you, if, you, if you're on the streets of uh, Nigeria, I, I, I mean, necessarily, if you go out to other parts of the country, especially in Lagos, you still see the queue. So I'm asking if, if, if you have this money in circulation, I mean, if we've said the, the government or there's been a ruling and there's been an order, some sort of collaboration, why then do you have people uh, queuing in the ATMs? Why then don't you have, you know, funds being, you know, dispensed at the ATM point uh, at different points in time? But uh, I can't wait to share the thoughts of Tunde Kolawili on this one. Niger more divided than the Civil War era. That's what Sanusi is quoted to say. And some people would not agree less. Now, very, very, very historic and very, very, uh, uh, it's, such a, it's such a big one for our democracy. Not necessarily Nigerian democracy, but for the democracy of the world is that uh, there's been protests as, Trump, Donald Trump, former president of the United States of America, pleads not guilty to crime charges. However, uh, he's been arraigned and, you know, caught. And you also have on this particular part where he's sitting with the, you know, with his lawyers. And on this other part of the picture, you find uh, this is saying, saying nobody is above the law. It's, it's a very huge conversation for our democracy. Just again, avoid offensive sermons. Uh, Noop tells clerics, just as uh, the Ramadan season continues, Whitney, Corona, OK's Crystal Independent Autopsy. A Fanny Ferry crisis deepens and youth asks Adeban Jaw to step down. That's uh, This is some of the headlines you find here. Before the want of time, we just quickly turn our attention to the nation. It talks about the federal government, Obi Dati's action, treasonable. Federal government, Obi Dati's action, treasonable, polls integrity intact. Showing car the Christ Dati's TV charts. That's Wole showing car. Let's uh, be very precise. Will be denies it all. Uh, wreck in governorship election uh, bribes or bribe mess. Wreck in governorship election bribe mess. How attempt to smuggle ballot papers was foiled. More like an editorial right there. Government holds 10% of hike in excess duty on non-alcoholic drinks. Uh, just before we move away from that, Trump pleads or pleads not guilty to 34 felony counts. And uh, we just uh, move away from that quickly. We have another paper. Uh, we'll just be looking at that one. It's the leadership newspaper this morning. The leadership says 54 days to inauguration. Tunubu headhunts best brains, competence for appointment. Now, this is the period where all of the lobbying uh, is going on uh, for those who have been re-elected and for the fresh kids in the blog, then you have a lot of lobbying going on. It says, uh, you, so there's a pictorial representation to those who probably might be considered uh, Sanusi Bajabia Mila, uh, Alake Erufai Akume, shortlisted Fire Me, 
uh, a DME may also be considered as you also have fascia there. So you, you, you look at these pictures, this is a man. I mean, what position they are considered for is something you want to ask. Relief as federal government halts planned increase in excess duty on beverages or beverages. Now, on the other side of the divide, like uh, the other paper, it was very explicit. It talked about non-alcoholic beverages. Now, this uh, is also making the rounds on the leadership. Trump arraigned for 34 criminal charges, pleads not guilty. The first time in the history of America that uh, you have a former president being... <laughs> You know, rain, and some people say for Nigeria, God win. That's the kind of comments you see. Bandits make fresh 100 million demand in Niger state. Now, there's a lot that's been going on shortly after the election. Prior to this time, uh, we have been having like a holiday. And just recently, again, you have all of the attacks on the high. APC governors meet today as race for 10th National Assembly intensifies. And that's what you know, politics is about interest lobbying. It will definitely continue. Federal government opens second Niger bridge May the 15th and completes a uh, local auto bridge. Then gunmen abduct eight students, village heads and wife, son in Kaduna and Kanu, that unfortunate incident that has happened. We'll just quickly run through uh, the Nature newspaper. Federal government inaugurates 14-man panel to develop national wash policy uh that's uh, boldly written there and just before move away african capable of becoming the world's first green civilization or civil and draw <laughs> but you know th there are also implications for this and some people will say the politics of you know uh the th for the third world especially when you have the center controlling everything and so you have the third world going green and what happens? That's also speak to development and infrastructure. We'll just take a break there now. Tunde Kola Wale, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Kola Wale, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Let me ask you, how do you feel about, you know, this headline that's making the rounds as to the post-election threat? That's how it's been captioned. Or be that the problem might just risk treasonable charges. That's according to what the federal government is saying. Well, um, uh, honestly speaking, uh, there is no doubt that uh, <clears throat> the candidate of the Labour Party and the Veronimate have been making very muscular uh, statements. Uh, and uh, when you make muscular statements, most times, the people in government will not be compatible uh, with that. But the question you ask yourself, in what way can one say that the statement that those two people have been making undermine the government of the federation or constitute a threat to the peace and stability of the nation? And so many people make a very uh, how would I say uh, a very muscular statement all the time on radio and television but nobody is accusing them of uh, accusing say for example the statement that has come from uh, for example the one that has come from uh, Bayo Nanuga and so many other persons in the APC. The truth of the matter is that uh, when President Muhammadu Buhari also lost election, that is before he won in 2015 and now he was also making uh, incendiary statements all over the place. With all those statements, the then President Good Luck Jonathan did not threaten to slam uh, treason uh, charges. Uh, against them. So if this is the case, I would want to say that it's not fair for the present government to be threatening with the attack with the treason uh, uh, charges. Yes, they may not have spoken as a statement. Yes, there may be some bitterness in some of the statements that they have made. But again, you want to say 
And most of the comments that they have made are really not far from some of the comments that have come from the APC culture or from the, some of the ambassadors uh, in Nigeria or from the international uh, community. I would rather want to see the federal government address the issues that uh, Obi and Dati are making so that you can have a free, fair, and better elections in the future. That it is not the court that will be deciding for the Nigerian electorate, those who govern them. Well, um, you, you talked about muscular statement. Uh, if we look at the definition of a treasonable offense or what constitutes a treasonable offense in Nigeria, uh, it talks about a attacking a state through a form of war or trying to overthrow a government of the day. Uh, that is categorized as treasonable. On the other hand, performing acts that are related to treason is regarded as a treasonable offense or where you have a person who instigates any foreigner to invade Nigeria with armed force is guilty of treason and is liable to punishment of death. So uh, you, you have said those statements. If, if we look at the statement, whether they're on television or you know the audio that has been viral. Uh, some quarters will say that it's not true, it's doctored. But if there's anything to go by, do you think that this is uh, a treasonable offense when you look at the definition, what uh, the definition of uh, treason is against a country, especially in this context, Nigeria? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> The statement may be, uh, like I said, muscular. They may not be, like the statement, uh, a statement should make. But I don't think that those statements are capable of uh, undermining or threatening or leading to the overthrow of the government. I don't think so. They are statements that are coming from uh, the city, uh, citizens who feel deeply injured, who feel deeply deprived. Rather, it is those who read the election, it is those who undermine the election, it is those who suppress their voters, it is those who didn't allow Nigerian people to have a free and fair election that could be said to be threatened on the part of treasonable felonies. So they call out, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. So, but, so what, what would be the rationale of you know, the government, uh, especially when you have comments from Lai Mohammed? How would you describe that, uh, that you know, such statement will be put? Do we classify that as hate speech? What, what exactly do we describe such comment coming from the government, especially when you look at what a treasonable offense is against a country? Well, it's not impossible that uh, Alati Lai Muhammad has made those statements to kind of uh, put uh, water on those incendiary statements to dampen them. It's not impossible. He, is, he intended to use those statements as a kind of caution against Dati Muhammad and uh, Mr. Peter Obi. Many times, most governments and security people will not want to wait until the situation starts boiling over before they start uh, finding ways and means to curtail some of those dangers. It's like uh, reminding those two people that they should be aware of what they are saying in order not to further heat up the policy. So further heat up the policy. Uh, that's the way I see it. All right, then uh, quickly on the punch, this is very interesting. And uh, it talks about foreign investors who shun states like Kano, Rivers, Ogun, and 24 other states in Nigeria uh, as our investment fell by 20.47%. That's uh, $1.3 billion from $6.7 billion in 2021 to uh, 3.33 billion naira. A, a dollars, I beg your pardon, in 2022. Uh, 
what exactly do you think that uh, could be responsible for this particular behavior from foreign investors when you look at the states and the states that are also in, attracted uh, foreign investment in the country? Uh, they say these states include, uh, you have the likes of Oyo State, uh, among others, Ondo, uh, the FCT, Anambra, Ikiti, and Akwaibom, Plateau Casino, among others. So what exactly would have been, you know, a plus for the states that attracted investors and those uh, that, you know, didn't attract investors? Well, the, the, the truth of the matter is that um, the business people are very sensitive people. They look at so many things before they start investing their money and resources in any particular location or environment or state or country. Some of the things that they look at is the, the ease of doing business. Is it easy to do business in this environment? Will people not be asking me for gratification before I invest? If there are infractions, if there are issues that have to be resolved by the court, or by the justice system. Will I get justice seniorly? Will the court decide my case fast enough so that money, energy, resources will not be tied up? Of course, should they look at the state of security in some of these uh, states? So, the use of doing business, security, the, the legal system, in that kind of environment with regards to ability to dispense justice in a free and fair manner and a very expeditious uh, manner, all contribute a great deal into influencing the decision of the businessmen to invest in any environment. And furthermore, here and I would also know some of these states, some of these governors are better marketers than the other. We know of some of them who travel around the world trying to woo investors to their states. And because investors will not just come, they, are, they must do some things, they must make some offers to them. Maybe in terms of uh, easy uh, land acquisition, in terms of being able to get the sea of all of whatever land that they acquire to, do their, uh, to, to build their industries, to build their factories, and then uh, to do farming. These are some of the issues that, uh, so for some of those states that have been able to attract uh, bigger investments, it could be that they have been able to improve on some of these things. And those that have not been able to, it could be that they are slacking, or they are slack in some of those areas, or that there is insecurity around them, or they are not doing enough marketing, so that's their businesses to their states and what have you. But the tragedy of the whole thing, and the most important in my humble opinion, is that uh, in a country in which unemployment has been said to have uh, risen to about 3%, it's a uh, double jeopardy for us. If again, investments are falling in our country. And it's important that both the state and the federal government do something to cover those uh, faults and the investment that have been attracted to the different uh, states of the Federation. Well, I'd like to ask you also, this is also making the rounds on different papers, what lessons can Nigerian Africans learn from the arrest of former President uh, Donald Trump as regards, uh, you know, crime. Uh, he's been arrested. Of course, he's pleaded not guilty. W what exactly do you think that, you know, all the democracies, especially of the third world, can learn? Well, uh, you will see that uh, part of the reason that American is able to make progress, part of the reason that China is making progress, part of the reason that um, a great Britain is making progress is because they are put in place the railway to enforce the law against both the tiger and the fly. No matter who you are, if you commit a crime or an infraction, they have a way of bringing you to justice. It is unlike here in Nigeria, in which it is only the fly that, are, that get caught 
in the web of a toaster. I'll give you an example. During the Okuta panel, General Ibrahim Babangida was invited to appear before the Okuta panel. It was because his name kept kept coming up throughout the proceedings of that panel. But lo and behold, General Babangida refused to appear before the Okuta panel. Rather, he rushed to court to restrain the Okuta panel from compelling him to appear before it. And the court gave him that injunction. And then again, you will remember, there was a time General Richard Gorbachev was also dragged to court. I think it was some two police officers who dragged the General Gorbachev to, to, to court. They went to his farm to conduct a search to arrest some of his, uh, or one or two of his vehicles that were said to have uh, uh, broken uh, the traffic uh, rules and uh, regulations. And then, but when they got to the farm, I think they were beating up. And some of those policemen, or one of them or two, lost uh, the, got their teeth uh, broken and all. So when they was that court and all that, and the court, uh, I think, uh, said he should appear before, he refused to appear. That guy also went to court. And court went and declared that the passenger is an institution. You cannot just take that into court like that. So when you look at all these scenarios, and of course, do you remember uh, the former governor of Cross River State? Uh, I think also when the ESCC wanted to take him to court, he went to another court and got an injunction, a perpetual injunction, restraining the ESCC from arresting and trying him. So if you have this kind of two parallel approaches, approaches to the justice system, you and I will want to say that the lessons of the learned from what is happening to the Nassau is about the law. And until Nigeria is also able to enforce its law, the devil, the tiger, and the fly, then we might not be creating a conducive environment for all citizens to try. We also, in a way, be undermining our own justice system and sending it to the rest of the world, which is not too good for us as a nation. Take the election that we're talking about. Basically, every election season that we have in our country today, the winners of the election have to be decided by the election presidential tribunal, the court of appeal, and the Supreme Court. That is not right. That is an attempt. It is the voters that should decide who governs them, who rules them, who manages their affairs. But it's been the opposite in Nigeria. In this democracy started in 1999. Let's uh, quickly look at the leadership now. Uh, the leadership is about Tunubu and the head hunt for best brains competence for appointment. Now, uh, there are some names that have popped up in the list of all of this. I'd like you to share your thoughts on that. Sanusi is there, Bajabia Miller. We, we can't actually say for what position they are considered for, uh, but uh, you have them. You also have Erufai. You have the likes of... Uh, Akume, Fire She, Fire Me, and uh, the list is almost endless. A day is also here. I mean, look, look, looking at these names that have you know popped up uh, as the list for consideration. What, what do you make about? What do you make of this? Best when, brains um, and competence. The first question I want to ask is: uh, Has the list been confirmed to be emanated from uh, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu? Because too many times. You find the speculation, you find rumors creeping into both the conventional media and the social media. Until those things are really confirmed, whatever we say about by the man who is said to have uh, made the list, who will just be making speculation on those lists. But without as it may, let me say this. When you look at those names, there are names of people who have been managing our affairs since 1999. If all of them are 
been the one sharing the responsibility of managing of our affairs since 1999. And the country has sunk to this level. Then you want to say that uh, that might not be appropriate to make as well as well as in Ogo. This is really serious in taking the country out of the quagmire it has found itself as today. You need fresh brain. You need clean hands. So to, to manage the affairs of this country, the problems have quadrupled in the areas of unemployment, in infrastructure, in security. You look at the Rufai, for example. The Rufai, the Kaduna State, has been the most ungovernable state in the country in terms of security. So what preaching, what term is it? What will I find you put it on uh, the tables of as well polar and you know, Look at the fire share and fire me. What is the performance of fire share and fire me in the state? In what ways are they dependent of their state? All of them have had eight years of ruling the city state. And to the best of my knowledge, I have traveled to a city. It is not better than when those two people took over the uh, power in the city state. It could also say similar things to some of these other people whose names have popped up on that list. Uh, if my sister is going to be liberated from unemployment, if Nigeria is going to have uh, or be able to pay the mountain of debt that it is carrying on its head today, if Nigeria is going to be recognized, respected in the international community, as one of the fastest growing economies, I know that. Then I what you will need to look outside some of those names that you have mentioned. Like, like Obama said, did when he was in government, he went for people like Okonjo Uriana, uh, the main uh, African Development Bank, and then he went for people like, uh, um, I forgot some of those names now. Even Soludo, he brought people like Soludo on board. And some people say, oh, are fresh hands. How are you here? And we saw some changes. At least our debts were, were forgiven. And then Nigeria started on the path of economic uh, growth. That is the way I see it. And all these tired, worn out, and uh, exhausted politicians. Give all those on the government. If you just be another job for the good boy, and not necessarily the kind of reward seeker for those who are ready to get the power, and not necessarily people who can really lift Nigeria out of the woods. I mean, what could it be responsible when we look at the punch newspaper away from that now? Uh, the fact that cash circulation probably seemed to be low. Uh, despite all of the directives and the commitment from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, the NLC is also mm -hmm. still saying, hey, we might still pick at your offices. That stands after the ultimatum. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on that. What do you think could be responsible for, you know, the, the circulation of cash? We're not even talking about the old uh, uh, narrow notes now, just oh, the new narrow notes. We're talking about the old ones. Uh, what could be responsible? And do you see the NLC embarking on that strike in no time and picketing <coughs> just like they have promised? We, uh, so many things could be responsible. <laughs> like I said on this program before, the damages that have picked up the Nigerian economy by that uh, Naira designer's uh, target. He is going to be with us in the next 10, 15 years. It might take up to 15 years for us to be able to get out of it. So many small businesses have collapsed. Individuals have lost their lives. Confidence in the Naira has been undermined. For international community too, they will be looking at us as a country that is not stable in terms of monetary policy. When now you do hear that America is redesigning or changing its currency, when now you do hear that Germany is redesigning and changing its currency, the only country that has changed their currency recently is Great Britain because of the death of the, of the coin. And they now have a thing, so they have to replace some of the pictures of the coin 
that is on their currency, which is a feature of the king. And that is the only reason that they are redesigning their currency. And even the one that they are redesigning, the old currency, they will still be in circulation over some years until they are gradually taken out of a, a circulation. So with regards to the challenges that the, the central bank is have, and really getting enough money into circulation, and there are many. One is that, uh, you know, part of the reason the impact of that Naira design strategy is to curb inflation and all that, reduce the money in circulation. So if that was the sentiment and all that, they would not want to pump uh, as much money into the system as we used to have before they redesigned it, in order not to jeopardize that project of reducing the money in circulation and then using monetary policy to curb inflation. Secondly, too, when some currency, when the currency is withdrawn from circulation, they are not kept in the fault anymore. Most times, they destroy them. So if when they were, the CBN was withdrawing those money, it had gone to destroy the old currency and all that, then it would be difficult to really be able to get all those monies back uh, into circulation. And of course, too, you and I will know that the processes of injecting currency into circulation is not just uh, a thing you do overnight. A lot of procedures uh, are involved. The banks must make requests, and the request that the banks will make will be based on the request of their own customers, too. Of course, to the business community, people who also want to borrow money to finance one project or the other. But who is borrowing money now? Who wants to start a new project with all the tomorrow that we have in the system? The elections came. It wasn't as peaceful as we wanted. The federal government is also saying that they want to do the censor. And all these things will cost money. All these things also have the possibility of destabilizing the economy, of destabilizing even the society as a whole. So most people are doing a kind of way, let's wait and see if this will happen. So that has kind of dampened what we used to have in the economic environment in the country. So this may be some of the challenges that is ampering injecting sufficient funds into the system. If they rush to inject enough money into the system, yes. what they had intended to achieve by withdrawing the whole currency in terms of pumping inflation and reducing the money in circulation, the objective would have been defeated. Which consequences is uh, uh, better imagine? Furthermore, you ask me whether the labor people still require to go on site. I think uh, they, they, they should have put them back on site uh, long ago, even though the CBN has made a decision on the redesigning of the notes and water, and it's gradually injecting more money into the system. But there must be a community, a monetary policy that has led to the collapse of businesses, that has led to the death of citizens and what are you, that is going to have consequences the economy in the next 15, 10 years. You don't just want to wish that away. People in the city and people in government have to be accountable. They must be trusted to justice. You must ask them questions. Who did what? From where this tragedy got inflicted on the Nigerian nation? So, even though they try to remedy the situation, they need to insist on accountability is enough for the labor people to embark on strike. You can't inflict all the on the nation and see the city prison on your offices. You can't inflict all the on injury on the nation. And then you know the head accountable. So to that extent, I want to say, the strike to be embarked by labor. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, just, just, just as we coast this important. conversation down on Off the Press, uh, I'd like to ask you if you align with the thoughts of the former CBN governor, Sanusi, uh, who says that uh, Niger's more divided than we were you know, during the civil war. Do you agree with that? 
Absolutely. I have two areas in so many areas. Uh, look at the animosity between the Yoruba and the Igbos. We went, uh, the only time we saw that happen was uh, during the Nigerian civil war and the civil war, and a few months before the civil war. The Yoruba, who have always been held on the war, who have uh, done a lot of intermarriage who have joined businesses all over the places and all that, are now pointing a kissing finger on themselves. Furthermore, you go up north, especially in Kaduna, and then the middle belt. The middle belt people are not comfortable with the result of the election that uh, we have had. And uh, there is less difference in those parts of the country. I mean, for now, very many Nigeria from the southern part of the country are not having as much as they would do to the northern part of the country. And you also find that there are some people from the northern part of the country who still have this less wait and see attitude for going about their usual and regular system in the different parts of the country. What most people are saying are saying that look, let's wait until the new president is inaugurated, the new government, the new senatorial congress, and now our assembly members are inaugurated. And we see what will happen before we begin to get back our life in a very gradual manner. I agree with you, Mayor Samuti, or former Mayor Samuti, that the fear is more polarized and more divided because of the unconscionable action of the Nigerian politicians and those who hang around them and those who speak for them and those who campaign for them. Suddenly, the region has become an issue in Nigeria. Certainly, tribe has become an issue in Nigeria. Certainly, the regions in which you come from has become an issue. For God's sake, it doesn't like that. Uh, before the uh, last election was conducted. Well, we have to let you go at this point in time. Thank you so much. Uh, we just hope that we're able to find the ember of uh, unity and that of, uh, you know, progress, I mean, in diversity and not that of disunity. Hopefully, we'll just get to that point where we understand that we're one and it doesn't matter what language or what location or wherever it is that we find ourselves. But the beautiful thing is that we're Nigerians. That's it. Thank you so much, Tunde Kolawale. Thank you for having me. We have been speaking with uh, Kola Wale, who has been a guest on the show this morning. He's a legal practitioner right here in Lagos, and he's shared his thoughts on the papers this morning. We'll just take that break. When we return, we'll help, uh, head straight to our first conversation here. We ask that you stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>